As a young married couple starting in ministry, Robert and Stacy Gay wrestled over the decision to have a second child. Stacy was ready. Robert was not. She prayed and she said, uh, Lord, I just want confirmation, you know, uh, if this is me or if this is you or if this is something that we should proceed ahead on, you know, having another child. The answer came shortly thereafter at a church conference through prophetic words. I didn't get just one, not just two, but three words. One of them was, I see a baby, and the other one was, I see you're, you're about to have a child. And then the other word was, I see you're going to have a child, and you're going to have this child before the end of the year. A daughter who would be a dancer in the House of Lords, she'd have a very effervescent personality. Whenever I got those words, I knew, uh, Lord, this is you. Like many Christians, Robert and Stacy believe that God still speaks today and that he often speaks through others using prophetic words. Around, I guess it was about the end of March, um, we found out that Stacy was pregnant. But one week later... Within the same week that I found out I was pregnant, then I began to bleed and spot very heavily. Having had a miscarriage before with our first child, I, I kind of knew what it felt like and what the symptoms were. After running tests, Stacy's doctor delivered the devastating news. Then they confirmed that I had what they termed a blighted ovum. Pregnancy had taken place, but it had died on the vine, and uh, their prognosis was there was no life in the womb. And she called me on the phone and she was crying and she said, what are we going to do? The doctor said, I need to go to the hospital and be admitted and have this DNC procedure. I said, uh, you're not going to do anything. We are going to stand and we're going to believe the word of the Lord. That evening, whenever I got home from work and she was there at the house, I laid my hands on her stomach and I said, you will live and not die. You will live and not die. And we began to agree together and the church began to pray. And we all began to just speak life to the womb and began to declare the prophetic word that had been uh, spoken of our lives. But the bleeding continued. It wasn't something that was easy because there were times, many times I felt like going, I'm going to the hospital, I don't care. But you just, you had to remind yourself, you have to keep reminding yourself the word of the Lord. And you have to remember, rehearse it over and over and over in your, in your mind what the word said. Subsequent visits to the doctor brought the same dire report. His report would always be, there's no life, we need to go. I mean, he would get his little heartbeat machine out and, you know, try to find a heartbeat and could not find the heartbeat. And every time it was like, you're prolonging your misery. Why do you continue to do this to yourself? But several weeks later, the gays received a very different report. A strong heartbeat resounded from the womb. Eight months later, the astonished doctors delivered a perfectly normal baby girl. For 18 years, the gays have been praising God for their beautiful dancer. I'm just proud of my parents that they stuck through it, and because um, if they wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been here. And. and if it would not have been for that prophetic word, we'd had every reason just to believe what the doctor had said. and go with his recommendation and his diagnosis because our emotions were saying all kind of things you know and it is the word that became the anchor for our souls it was that prophetic word that kept us from being tossed to and fro